Um, hi. All right, hello guys. Welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, my name is Nikki and this is my book nook and I'm so excited for today's video because Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood is officially out. This is her third full-length novel. I loved the first two of her books. Um, if you've been watching me for any amount of time, you would have seen me read and talk about both of these books countless times on this channel. I just love Allie Hazelwood. She has this style that is all her own. She, you know, writes about women in STEM, smart women, women that love math and science, and are just, you know, involved in relationships with grumpy, broody men that we just love. And I have been so looking forward to this book. Like I said, loved the first two. I still at this point don't even know for sure which one I liked better. I think the love hypothesis is the one that like has stuck with me the longest, but I'm just a fan. I have genuinely no idea what this book is about. Like I'm just one of those people when an author becomes an auto buy author for me, I don't look into what their books are about. I love to go in totally blind. I mean, I can assume this once again is about a woman in STEM, some sort of like scholarly, smart, badass girl, and probably a grumpy man, um, some sort of situation between the two of them, some sort of rivalry, enemies to lovers kind of moment. I don't know, but we're gonna find it out together. I'm gonna do a reading vlog, and um, if you guys haven't watched a reading vlog on my channel before, I do full spoilers because I want this to be like we're reading it together. I'm gonna, every time I stop, I'm gonna say like what chapter I'm at and then I'm gonna give my thoughts. So, you know, if you haven't yet read it, if you don't want any spoilers, go read it, come back and watch this video or like I said, read it along with me, stop at the parts that I stop at and then we'll have our little book club. But it's Friday night, 10 p.m. and I am ready to dive into this book. So I'm gonna get started on it and as soon as I have like a general idea of what the basic sort of synopsis is, I'll come back, we'll talk about it, and then we'll just keep on going. I Fingers crossed, I hope I love it as much as I love the first two. My expectations are high, so let's see what happens. Okay guys, we have a lot to talk about. I just finished chapter six, I'm on page 103, and like I said, going into this, had no idea what this book was gonna be about, didn't even know the basic concept, and as I started to read it, just in the very beginning, I kind of thought it was gonna be one thing and very quickly it shifted into something else. And I have to say, very much surprised me. So this story follows this girl named Elsie, this woman named Elsie, I suppose you could say. Um, she has her PhD, she works in physics, she is a physics like theorist, like she creates theories and she works as a professor, she works as an adjunct professor is what they call it, so she works at multiple different colleges in Boston and she has been trying for a long time now to work her way up to like a more sort of prestigious position. She wants to like have tenure at a university and so in the meantime she's been doing this sort of job that she's been doing, um, not making much money, and so to make a little extra cash on the side, she actually works as a fake girlfriend. So she has these clients that will basically hire her to go on dates with them, and not like an escort situation, but just she pretends to be their girlfriend for whatever it might be, like events, whatnot, and she has this one client named Greg that she has been pretending to be his girlfriend for the past six months, and they've honestly formed a little bit of a friendship at this point, but I guess his family, his parents, his grandparents just like want him to be dating someone. He's tired of like answering their questions about it. So she's been going with him every so often to these different like family gatherings and whatnot. So at the beginning of this story, we see Elsie with Greg going to another family function where she runs into Greg's brother named Jack. And her and Jack just have this like weird little tension between them. She's only met him a couple of times, but every time she meets him like, he just, I don't know, like it seems like he's kind of on to her, it seems like he's just always like looking at her across the room, always sort of like challenging her, and I mean she cannot deny he's very attractive, but she doesn't know a lot about him, but anyways, that's going on, and then, you know, otherwise she is, like I said, trying to get a better teaching position, and so this new role has come up, and it is like perfect for her, um, you know, she's really qualified for it. It really is the next sort of step she needs on her career ladder. And so she's kind of like one of the final candidates now. It's between her and this one other person and she's talking to this lady that's on the hiring committee and she's like, okay, I have to be honest with you. Like, I think that you are the best person for this role, but 
there are several people in charge of you know who gets hired and this one guy is so basically I guess there's some drama in the physics community there's kind of like a battle between the theorists and then the like experimentalists like they kind of I guess the theorists you know create theories and think about math and what could be where the experimentalists actually like do the science and the experiments and so they kind of like don't like each other I guess and there's this one like iconic experimentalist that caused like a big rift in the community whatever it's so a long story short he is in charge of like or he's like on this hiring committee and he has like a very big say in who gets hired so it's basically her versus this one other candidate that is an experimentalist and so she has to basically win him over attempt to and also like win over the people that kind of like ride the line between the two whatever so she goes to this like dinner to like you know meet with all these people schmooze them whatnot and the man that she knows of that's very notorious for his you know work and whatnot um shows up to the dinner and it is jack it is jack greg's brother um he goes by jack around her but he goes by a different name like his full name in all of his like scientific work so she did not put two and two together that that was him did not have any idea that that was him so obviously this is kind of a scandalous situation because jack knows elsie as greg's you know girlfriend and she does not give any real information about herself when she is fake dating someone so um the family thinks that she is a librarian um she's never mentioned anything about science or being a physicist or anything like that so jack is obviously very very confused and is a little bit alarmed that his brother's girlfriend works in the field that he works in and has been lying to their family for many months you know as a good brother would be and um Elsie, because of like confidentiality reasons is like shit i can't like tell him that he's hired me to fake date him and also he greg is on a retreat right now where he has like no cell phone service so they can't even call him and he's going to be on the retreat for like the next week or whatever until the hiring process is over so that's where we've kind of left it like jack is sort of threatening her like you're not getting this job you don't deserve this job um well, he thinks she deserves it. Like, he thinks that she's brilliant. He's read all of her work, obviously not realizing it was her. But he has suspicions about her. He is just not really for her. And she hates him because now she knows who he is. And he's been this guy that, like I've said, has been notorious in this community that goes against everything she believes and has really knocked down her profession for a long time. So this is like a total, once again, like, academic scholarly workplace rival slash enemies sort of thing so um i guess now that throughout i don't know how long it's going to go on in the story but elsie has to like continue this process of going through these rounds of you know interviews and people like shadowing her classes and stuff trying to get this job and then i guess obviously it's going to play out that we're going to see the brother finding out that greg is fake dating her and i guess obviously they're gonna get together at some point i don't know but um yeah i i i'm liking it so far like it really took these full hundred pages to kind of like get the gist of what the story's about and like where it's going and i have to say like the concept is interesting it's different um i just kind of thought it was going to be a fake dating story initially like i was like oh is she gonna get with this greg guy like is that what this is but Clearly that is not what this is. So definitely intrigued. I will say this book is very, very heavy on the science talk and the academia talk. Like every one of Allie Hazelwood's books includes that. You definitely see some science. You see some talk of that. You see some like research and experiments and whatnot like talked about in the book. But this is like, it's been a lot. It's been a lot of talking about like what people in academia go through and the struggles of being a professor and different theories and why people think one way or the other way or the whole experimentalist versus the theorist and why they give each other a hard time like there's been a lot of talk about that and you know i always feel like i get smarter as i'm reading ally hazelwood's books like i always learn something new so i don't really mind it but i can definitely see how some people wouldn't care for that you know if they're just reading oh sorry shook my table um if they are just re wanting to read like a romance book they're like i don't really need a whole lesson on physics right but i 
don't know. I think it's cool, especially because that is Allie Hazelwood's background. Like, I always think it's cool when authors can write about things that they know in some form or another. Like, she was in academia, literally, as the Love Hypothesis was out in the world, she still was working as a professor, which I just, I don't know. I think it's really inspiring and cool. So, um, I'm liking it so far, but like, I'm gonna hold my true thoughts. I don't wanna say you know yet what i'm thinking we're only in the first quarter of the book so far so lots to still happen but i'm definitely intrigued so i'm gonna keep on going and i will check back in with you guys whenever i have something to say okay hi guys i just got to chapter 18 page 250 and i must be honest as i always am i'm having a lot of thoughts and feelings when it comes to this book it has taken me three days to read the last 150 pages and I just honestly, I feel like the plot and the pacing of this story are just a little bit odd. Like I feel like I'm just trying to figure it out. Obviously we left off with knowing that Elsie was trying to get this job, that you know her and Jack have some tension between the two of them, that he thinks that she's been lying to his brother, blah 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 didn't really know where the story was gonna go from there but not too far after that I mean within I think 75 to 100 pages I mean we learned that um, or Jack learns about the whole fake dating scheme something happens with um, Greg he has to have emergency dental surgery and both Elsie and Jack get called to go and pick him up and um, that's when it all comes out because he's like on you know painkillers and stuff from his dental procedure thing and it just sort of comes out that they've been fake dating and that's when we learn that Greg is asexual and doesn't want a relationship and that's why he hired Elsie to be his fake girlfriend and he's had pressure from his family and Jack feels guilty that he didn't see it sooner and so that part is kind of like out of the way now I was kind of wondering how long that was going to be drawn out in the story so that's over and pretty much right after that immediately Jack admits that like he has a thing for Elsie and he's always had a thing for Elsie and here is where I'm just like running into issues with this book and I'm like trying to think back on her other two books because obviously Allie Hazelwood like if you follow her on Instagram she's a very quirky person she's got a lot of like you know just really funny little things and she's very like she's got a very particular sense of humor and I just don't remember all of this like quirkiness in the first two books not to this extent it's just kind of driving me a little bit crazy because you know there's a real like important kind of message and theme in this book and it's that Elsie is a person that changes who she is depending on who she's around she's never really true to herself doesn't know how to be true to herself wants to like be a people pleaser blah 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 and so there have been several times throughout this story so far where real conversations start to happen, right? Like Jack and Elsie start to kind of talk, start to bond. You know, Ali Hazelwood's dialogue is so good. Like her kind of flirtatious dialogue between, you know, the main characters, things that the guy especially says, like it just makes your heart kind of like, you know, stutter in your chest. It's so good. But every time a legitimate conversation starts to happen in the story, something interrupts it that is like quirky and goofy and it's like kind of driving me insane um i love twilight as much as the next person like uh if not more got a tattoo for the whole thing um it's been mentioned approximately 27 times in this book like the fact that the main character likes twilight has been mentioned so many times um her and her roommate both really like cheese cheese is mentioned every time the roommate is mentioned which is frequently um a joke about cheese the fact that she's eating cheese the fact that you know elsie looks at pictures of cheese before she goes to sleep like it's just being mentioned so much and there's also just kind of like some very childish kind of gross humor being thrown in here that i'm just like can we not like whenever um greg was like hyped up on like the painkillers he was going on and on about do you guys know that milk comes from nipples did you know that like milk is from nipples almond milk isn't from nipples though and nipples 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 he kept talking about nipples and i'm just like 
Okay, and then, like, I just, certain lines are sticking out to me. Like, Jack finally asks Elsie out and says that he likes her, and she's like, why, why do you want to be around me, you know, is it, is this something that you like, like, teasing me, whatever, like, some people are into armpit sex, but you're into this, and I'm just like, armpit sex, like, what, and once again, that's like a conversation that was definitely supposed to be, like, you know, an intimate conversation, like, we're actually getting somewhere, we're bonding, and she's, like, bringing up armpit sex, and I'm like, can we just not do that, and then also Greg was talking about, like, how your pee smells when you eat asparagus, and now they're talking about, in the last chapter, like, pimple popping porn, like, I'm just, I'm not to be, like, totally annoying and prudish, but I'm just, like, the icky, pee-pee, poo-poo, gross humor, it's just, like, it just feels so childish to me, and I don't love that it's, like, sprinkled in, it feels like every few pages, like, I just don't, I don't need all that, and, um, at this point in the story, it's like, okay, it's a 400 page book, I'm on page 250, and I just, like, I'm confused where it's going, because Elsie realized that she did not get the job, um, already at least 50 pages ago, she did not in fact get the job, it turns out she was never gonna get the job, because there was this other candidate that's like super qualified, but they just brought her in because you know, kind of because they felt like they had to, to have some competition. Also, the lady that brought her in really wanted, um, like, a theorist on, you know, the option list, but it was just not going to happen. And so she's, like, devastated over that. You know, this job was everything she needed, but then she didn't get it. And she was really pissed at Jack, but then now they're just, like, dating, I guess, question mark. And we just had a little cameo from Adam and Olive, which... I think was supposed to like make me scream and don't get me wrong like when I was like oh Adam like cool such a hot take guys I just think stuff like that it's cute it's fun I don't mind it but it just always to me feels a little bit like forced you know it's like okay yeah like give the people what they want but it's like pages and pages and pages of like a conversation with Olive and like about what her and Adam's wedding is going to be like and it just doesn't pertain to this story at all and it's like if you hadn't read The Love Hypothesis, like, you don't even know who these people are. It kind of just doesn't fit in the story. Like, I think I wouldn't mind it, but I just feel like so much of this book so far is just fluff. Like, it just feels so slow to me, and I'm just not really sure what the plot is because what I thought the plot was going to be was over very quickly, and then what I thought the kind of secondary plot was going to be with the job also over very quickly. Also, the whole thing about him, like being grumpy and not wanting her to get the job and the major like, you know, they were against each other, enemies, whatever. That was just like over within a chapter. It's like he went from hating her to being like obsessed with her and crushing on her and literally telling her every five minutes that he likes her and wants to be with her and wants to date her within like a chapter or two. So they're not even enemies anymore and it just is him kind of flirting with her and going after her and her not believing that he really likes her, I guess, but she's also obsessed with him, so I don't know. Um, he did bring up the fact that she could come and work for him, like, in his lab and do research or whatever, even though that's, like, something that her mentor has kind of, like, advised her against, and her mentor also, like, hates Jack. They're kind of mortal enemies because Jack publishing that weird article back in the day kind of like jeopardized her mentor's career so he would never advise her to work with him blah 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 so I'm sure that's where the story is gonna go she's going to go and work with him because she needs more money she hates teaching she wants to do research so I assume that's the direction we're heading in but I just I'm like okay we have this much left this much left and they're currently dating kind of happily, and I'm just not sure what's happening in the rest of this book, and I'm just, I feel like I'm trudging through it a little bit, and I hate to say that because I was really, really excited about it, but I'm obviously going to finish it out, finish strong, and we'll see what happens and how I feel, but if I'm, if I'm giving an opinion right now, this just has nowhere near the magic that I felt in the first two books. Like, I just, loved those books. I haven't read Ali Hazelwood's um, novellas yet, the like Loathe to Love You series. I haven't read those, um, so I'm only speaking about Love Hypothesis and Love on the Brain, but I just loved those books, and they just, I flew, th the Love Hypothesis, I flew through it in a day, like in practically one sitting. I couldn't put it down, 
and I'm feeling the opposite of this book. Like I feel like I'm wanting to put it down after every single chapter and I haven't felt that way about her first two books. So I don't know. I'm going to keep going, but of course I had to just jump in and update you guys. So yeah, I will check in when I have something to say or maybe just at the end. We'll see how I'm feeling. So I finished and, um, I just, I, I don't have much to say guys, to be honest. Um, I hate doing reading vlogs like this when I end up not really liking the book because it's just kind of like an anticlimactic experience. Like I love doing reading vlogs where every 50 to 100 pages I'm turning the camera on and kicking and screaming and just like dying over a book and just like going through the journey with you guys. Like I feel like those videos are so fun, but sometimes you just get disappointed and I have to say I'm just really disappointed with this one. I mean, as I've said 10 times now, I adored these books. I loved both of them. They were both five stars for me. <laughs> both of them gripped me, had me flying through them, so invested. I just, the banter had me just smiling. I loved both of the men in this book. Like the story was just there. It's like you had the whole women in STEM thing, the sciencey aspect, but the story itself, the relationship was just like so cute, so good, so well done that um, you know, I just, I loved it. But this book seriously just felt like, okay, Allie, we need you to write another book about a scientific academic woman and a guy that she's supposed to hate and then end up loving. And there needs to be a plot twist at the end once again, where a man is trying to discredit the woman for her work or bring her down or whatever. And, um, then there needs to be an epic just like scene at the end where the girl gives in and decides to be with the guy and whatever like that's just <laughs> that's how it felt it just felt like there was no true plot to the story i mean she ends up accepting the position to work under the george woman who ended up getting the job over her um, we find out that the reason in the first place that Jack wrote that article was because he was trying to discredit and take down Dr. L, who is her intern, because Dr. L basically destroyed the career of Jack's mother. So he like wanted to get revenge on him and it worked basically, but now he's still working in the field and is now taking advantage of Elsie. And you can kind of see throughout the book how he's like discouraging her from moving forward and you know having a better career making moves and choices like he's kind of just like holding her back and so that comes out in some very dramatic meeting where she's asking for his blessing to accept this dream job and he's like no silly stubborn little girl you will not take that job and i was just like fighting not to roll my eyes i don't know i'm not gonna lie i was absolutely skimming the last like 30 to 50 pages of this just desperately trying to finish and and I did and I just have nothing really to say about it it just didn't do it for me um I just didn't I don't know I didn't feel connected to the girl in this and I'm like not trying to be annoying but <laughs> I made jokes and I made comments about how cheese was mentioned all the time and Twilight was mentioned all the time and since I made those comments, it was mentioned, each of them, about 150 more times. Like, I'm not even joking you. Every other page was like, cheese, 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 Twilight, Breaking Dawn, Twilight. It just like, it was too much. It was too quirky. And also, I almost threw my book across the room when, towards the end, um, Jack is like, what should I wear? And she's like, the Henley. Wear a Henley like you always do. Literally every... One of her books, the men have worn Henleys. It's like, it just feels copy paste at this point. And you know, it's like for two books, I could, I could allow it. I did a reading vlog of Love on the Brain and I had, I mean, most people I felt like also really liked it, but I did have some comments from people being like, I felt like it was the same book. Like it just wasn't different enough for me. I don't know. And I honestly, I disagreed. I was like, yes, they have similarities, but 
they were two different stories it felt different this one was kind of in you know in academia and this one was at NASA like I just felt like they were different enough but still keeping the same vibes I totally went to war for Allie Hazelwood I fought for these books I was like I love them I don't care what anyone says but <laughs> reading this one it just truly felt like it was the same book the same story like a combination of these two books but just not as good there was just no like magic to it nothing that just made my heart explode nothing that kept me super interested like straight up guys if i was not filming a reading vlog for this if this was not one of my most highly anticipated reads of the year i would have dnf'd it halfway through because i just was not interested so um that is unfortunately how i feel um it just wasn't for me but you know i'm interested to hear what you guys think about it like i said I still haven't seen really anybody talk about it on my Instagram like I haven't seen any posts about it so not sure what that means but I don't know I'm like interested to see what's next for Allie Hazelwood but guys I mean she has a book coming out that's like about chess it's like a YA romance uh, it's called like checkmate or something I'm actually very interested in that because I I just feel like it'll be different. I feel like it'll be her writing, but we'll get to see something else, a different type of setting. Um, I don't know anything about chess, but I really love The Queen's Gambit. So if it's anything like that, um, I'm willing to check it out for sure, even though it's a YA romance. But when it comes to her like adult books, I'm so interested to see what's next. And I just have to say, I swear to God, if she announces her next book and it's called like Experimenting with Love, I might um, lose my mind. <laughs> I might. I don't know. I have a feeling. I swear to God, it's going to be something like that. Experimenting with love or love. I almost said hypothesize. That's the same thing as the love hypothesis. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. But that's it. <laughs> if you watched this sad little reading vlog, I really appreciate it. Again, I would love to hear all y'all's thoughts down below. But yeah, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.